Today we've got a nuclear revenge years in the making. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, I ruined my mom's friend's life and I don't regret it. Ever since I was a little girl, Aunt Amelia had always been a thorn in my side. She was one of my mom's closest friends and she lived next door to us, so there was no escaping her at all. I remember always hiding in my room every time she came over as a child, even as little as 10 years old. What was my issue with her? Well, for one, Aunt Amelia for some reason just couldn't keep her mouth shut. What was worse was that she never had anything good to say about anything or anyone. She would complain about people's weights, height, fashion choices, hair, dog breed, and even the fact that they seemed happy. Why my mom liked having someone like that around, especially around her children, was and is still a mystery to me. Now, I would have been content with just avoiding her. But for some reason, she seemed to figure out my dislike of her, and she made it her life's mission to do all she could in her power to upset and rile me up. It was straight up targeted harassment. Now, I'm a very reserved person. I rarely talk, and I've mastered the art of one-word answers. I also hate confrontations, as they make me extremely anxious. So when Aunt Amelia starts talking smack about me, like how I look overfed and should cut down on eating, or how children my age were already doing great things and I should try to challenge myself, never mind the fact that her own sons were bullies who did nothing but shoplift and smoke blunts at the junkyard, I would just smile uncomfortably and try to get out of the situation. A few times, I tried to talk to my mom about how disrespectful her friend was. Unfortunately, she just couldn't see it, and instead advised me to keep my distance if I didn't feel comfortable. And so I dealt with Aunt Amelia's bullying for years without any serious confrontation. And then, one day in my senior year of high school, something absolutely ridiculous happened. I, like almost everyone else in my class, was very concerned about getting admission into college. I had applied to a few colleges within and outside New Orleans, hoping that my stellar record and extracurricular activities would help get me into one of America's top universities. Apparently, the thought of me going to college was something Aunt Amelia just could not take, so she tried to sabotage it. One day, a rumor started going around that someone had one day broken into school at night and stolen the principal's prized baseball signed by Ryan Braun from his office. The vandal had also allegedly tampered with the school's records, stealing some documents. The whole school was buzzing with the news. Many people had their suspicions, and more than just a few people, including me, suspected that it had been Andrew and his gang. Andrew was Aunt Amelia's son, and unfortunately we were in the same class. In case you're wondering, Yes, my dislike of Aunt Amelia extended to Andrew. He was just so sly and mean. The issue of the stolen baseball was so serious that we had an assembly, which was rare to have in school, and he threatened that if the vandal was caught, he would punish them to the full extent of his power. About a week passed before something happened. The something was walking home from school to see police officers just outside our home. My parents were talking to a bulky police officer on the driveway. Them both being home from work at this time was not a good sign at all. The moment they saw me, they all, the police officer too, walked towards me with grim looks on their faces. Hello there Jennifer, I'm Officer Daniel and I'd like to ask you a few questions if you don't mind, the officer stated, and I almost instinctively knew what had gone down. Of course, Andrew had somehow hidden the baseball in my house. If I knew that little runt, he'd probably been the one to call the police to report that the baseball was in my house. I was almost completely right. It turns out it was Aunt Amelia who would call the police after seeing me hide it in my pocket the previous day. I just couldn't believe it. Saying awful things about me to my hearing was one thing, but actively trying to ruin my life was another. However, as much as I tried to defend myself, I just couldn't shake the case. Especially seeing as not only the ball, but the missing school records were found under my bed. After a long legal battle, a change of schools and constant whispers from people, I was given a 30-day community service sentence, mostly because this was a first-time offense. It went on my permanent record, ruining any chance I had to get into an Ivy League school. 
At that point, I was done with Aunt Amelia. I told my mom I knew she and her son had been responsible somehow, and if she wasn't going to cut her off, I couldn't talk to her anymore. My mother chose her friend, and so I moved out to live with my grandparents. Thankfully, I got into a college where I studied accounting, and after I graduated, I moved to Chicago. This entire time, I rarely spoke to my parents. In Chicago, I got a job as a financial analyst, and I was pretty good at it. I was so good that in just a few years, I rapidly rose through the organization's hierarchy, and then I met my husband, Tony. Tony was an absolute sweetheart and was very supportive, and we fell in love almost immediately. We dated for a year, and then he proposed. I said yes, and we started planning our wedding. I still wasn't on good terms with my parents, and so I had no intentions of inviting them to my wedding, but Tony talked me into giving them another chance. While he wasn't particularly traditional, he felt it would be good if my parents were there for the wedding. He said it would bring good luck. And so, together, we started the process of reconnecting with my parents. It was hard, and sometimes I just wanted to go back to life without them, but I had honestly missed them both. And after weekly appointments with a psychologist, a few calls with my parents where we unpacked a lot, and a visit to my hometown, I made the decision to have my parents back in my life and invite them to the wedding. I wasn't pleased to find out that my mom was still close friends with Aunt Amelia though, but I was willing to let sleeping dogs lie so long as she kept her distance. The day of the wedding, I was excited and anxious. I wanted the day to be perfect. Everyone that I'd loved, including my parents, were present. And so when the time came, my father, who'd been waiting at the base of the aisle, put my hand in his and started walking me down the aisle. Then he moved closer to me and whispered that there was a little issue. But it wasn't serious enough to be a concern. I was about to ask what was wrong when I saw her. My father tightened his grip on my arm and whispered again that she hadn't been invited, but had just shown up and refused to leave. I wanted to stop the ceremony right there and tell her to leave my wedding. How dare she show up after what she did? But then my dad whispered again that everything would be just fine. And so reluctantly, I kept walking towards my amazing, loving, handsome Tony, who looked just simply stunning in his tuxedo. Watching him smile, my worries about Aunt Amelia simply melted away. Thankfully, Aunt Amelia behaved herself, and the wedding went without a hitch. In fact, she came afterwards to congratulate me, and I thanked her, though rather stiffly. After our wedding, Tony and I bought a house in the suburbs of Chicago, and then did something we'd been planning for months. We adopted a little girl, Charlotte, who had been at the Mercy Home for Boys and Girls before we adopted her. Intelligent and driven, she'd come right up to us when we walked in and asked if we were going to take her home. At that moment, I knew we would. So with all the legal requirements met and all the paperwork done, we brought in the beautiful, charismatic 10-year-old Charlotte into our lives. Tony and I showered our new daughter with love and did our best to provide as much as we could for her. She was also very reliable and was intent to take on as much responsibility as possible, even when we didn't want her to. Eventually, my parents said they'd like to meet her, and so Tony, Charlotte, and I got packed and went to my hometown to introduce my family to my daughter. My parents had planned a pretty nice family dinner at their home and had invited my older brother Brad, who lived in New York, in for a couple of days. I was worried that Charlotte wouldn't be comfortable around my parents, but that fear was soon tossed aside. She loved my parents, and in turn, my parents seemed to really like her too. This was going very well indeed. At my parents' home, my husband and I decided that we'd stay in the spare room while our daughter would stay in my old bedroom. Soon, Brad and his girlfriend too were home, and we started planning the dinner for that evening. I noticed something wasn't quite right when my mom started to set a table for eight people, so I asked if we were expecting anyone else. She sighed, turned to me, and said Aunt Amelia had said that she too wanted to meet my daughter. Mom told me that before I get upset though, that what happened between us happened a long time ago, and Amelia was a different person now. She pleaded with me to let go, and though I was skeptical about the whole thing, I decided there was no reason she couldn't join the dinner. That evening, dinner was already in full swing before Aunt Amelia rang the doorbell. My mom walked her in, and the moment she saw Charlotte, 
She had this bewildered look on her face. I didn't have to wonder to know why she had that look. You see, Charlotte is black, while my husband and I are white, but we didn't care about that at all. But I guess that must have been an issue for old Amelia. The entire dinner she stared at my daughter, and I was really uncomfortable about it. And then, just when I thought dinner just might go without a hitch, she did it. She asked, So why did you and your husband get a black daughter? Doesn't really match your skin. I was horrified and asked, What? I thought that was warning enough to shut up. She didn't seem to think so. She said, I mean, you don't exactly look like you're a family with the differences of your skin color. Seems a bit odd, don't you think? I mean, if you'd at least gotten a Mexit. Get out, I screamed. Get out. Get out and stay the heck away from my family. Amelia is many things, but even she knew she had to leave immediately. She glanced at my parents, dropped her wine glass, and left. I looked towards Charlotte to see that she was silently crying. Later that night, Tony and I had to talk to Charlotte about how some people are racist and reiterate that we loved her unconditionally and would defend her against any form of racism at all. It hurt to see Charlotte hurting, and it was at that moment that I decided I would have my revenge against Amelia. I can handle her being mean to me as a child or her even trying to get me imprisoned for a theft that I wasn't guilty of. But no one messes with my child and gets away with it. She was going to get what she deserved whether or not she knew it. I didn't want to do anything illegal or wicked, so I considered my options. On one hand, I could sue on Charlotte's behalf for emotional distress. However, that would only drag on for such a long time, but it could also possibly affect Charlotte in the long run, and that wasn't something I could just bear. So, I decided it would be best to put my complaint before a more powerful court, the Court of Public Opinion. I wrote a pretty informative post on the community's page on Facebook and a thread on Twitter of my daughter's experience with Amelia. And as I expected, there was a lot of public outrage. Even better than the outrage was the ton of love and support pouring in from thousands of people. And then people turned to Amelia to make sure she was paid. Hundreds of people reported her to her employer, and soon she was promptly fired. She was also banned from businesses around and scorned by people everywhere she went. It was also a coincidence that the IRS had been investigating her, and the dust that was raised from the public backlash gave them the edge to be more assertive in pursuing their case against her. Eventually, she was arrested for tax fraud. After a few months of trial, was sentenced to five years in prison and a $100,000 fine. I heard about these things through my dad as we returned to Chicago shortly after I made those posts. My parents seemed to think that I did too much, but I told them I'd had, in fact, not done enough. I wasn't going to make the same mistakes as my parents and excuse an awful person. As for Charlotte... She's fine now and she's thankfully gotten over the whole incident. She knows that she is and she always will be a part of my family, no matter what anyone says, even if she's green and I'm purple. So there it is, my story of how I ruined my mom's friend's life. I'd do it again for my daughter if I had to, and I'm really glad Aunt Amelia got what she deserved. And my only regret is that I didn't do something sooner. This next story is... How I got back at my friend years after we parted ways. Growing up, I was severely obese, and all the kids made fun of me for it. Kids are so mean, my goodness. It was torture having to live my life like that. In middle school, my parents took me to a dietitian who helped me with my unhealthy eating habits. I lost a healthy amount of fat from walking my dog and eating right, but I was still a bit big. My weight still bothered my mom. She would yell at me when I tried to eat snacks, make fun of my weight, and swear that I'm never going to get a boy to look at me if I kept my bad eating habits up. My mom didn't like me. I had no doubts that she loved me, but she just did not like me for being fat, and she blamed me for it. If you could just stop stuffing all those donuts in your mouth, maybe stop eating all that candy, she would say. I didn't have any friends in school because of how I looked. There were kids I could have been friends with, but I was way too cool for them. All those kids wanted to do was fawn over the popular kids, gossip about them, and hate them while wishing they were in their shoes, or that they had access to these kids. 
I didn't want to be friends with people like that. I wanted my group of people who genuinely loved themselves and had some self-respect and were content with who they were whenever they were geeks, fat, small, or didn't have sick cars and the nicest clothes. Granted, my confidence wasn't so big at the time. I was insecure about my body, but I was quite the confident kid, at least for someone my age who was obese. I believed greatly in myself. At that point, my weight would decrease and then I would add some weight back on, depending on the state of my mental health. I was indeed a mess. When my mom divorced my dad, my bad eating habits got even worse. Before that, they were separated and sleeping in different rooms. I was sad and terrified. Sad because I knew how crazy my dad was about my mom. I was worried that he would never be happy again if their marriage did not work out. I was terrified because my mom might get custody of my sister and me. I didn't want to live with my mom without my dad. He was the one who saved me from her angry outbursts, her fat shaming, and her strict diet rules that never apply to my sister. I couldn't imagine living with my mom with no dad to come to my rescue each time she tried to give me heck. I secretly worried about this all through the period of their separation until they had a divorce and my dad called us girls to ask who we would want to live with. I want to live with you, dad, my sister replied, but I also want to live with mom because I can't steal your lipsticks or play dress up in your clothes. My dad turned to me, his brows furrowed with worry. What about you, cupcake? I said you, dad, and that was it. My parents agreed to have shared custody. My mom loved my sister. They were very much alike in different ways. My mom used to be a model before she had my sister, and my sister was well on her way to being a model too. She was pretty, just like my mother, but just like my mother, she could be very selfish and irritable. They got along well until they didn't. When that happens, my sister would run back from our mom's to our dad's home. Whenever my dad wasn't letting her attend all the late night parties she wanted to go to, she would run home to my mom. My parents used to have lots of arguments about how my mom would let my sister attend even college parties. My dad didn't like it and my mom knew, so she allowed my sister to attend these parties, even lending her clothes and doing her makeup just to spite my dad. I guess it's safe to say that my sister enjoyed the best of both worlds. She ran to my dad's house for the benefits and would ring my mom to pick her up whenever she felt my dad was being strict. I, on the other hand, didn't have that much privilege. I hardly went to my mom's. I avoided her house. She didn't seem to care so much about my absence either. I was mostly on my own. My dad could only spend so much time with me. He started dating someone. I was excited about this, but that cut out some of our daddy-daughter time. He had to work with and socialize, and I was just there with my books and plants. One day, I was outside buying ice cream from a truck for me and my little cousin whose parents were visiting when I saw a very handsome boy walking into the house next to ours. That was how I developed my first serious crush on my neighbor. He was super cute, had light brown hair, and wore glasses. You know how people often assume that any kid who wore glasses was a dork? Well, he didn't look dorky at all. He was cute and well-built. Behind his eyeglasses were beautiful eyes. He came out again and was speaking to his mom while I watched. His mom spotted me and nodded towards me. I was embarrassed and tried to look away, but the boy turned and waved at me. I smiled and waved back. That was the beginning of a friendship that came to mean a lot to me. We became quite close and hung out together after school. For a full year, he would visit me in my house and I would go over to his house too. We would read books together and did appraisals of the books after. His dad had a library full of books, so we would sneak in and read the books together. We had so much fun together, and I barely thought of my inexistent relationship with my mother or how I had a great dislike for my sister. We talked about the popular people in our schools, and he complained about them being too shallow and how a girl in his class was reading her essay to the class and pronounced island as Eastland. I remember us having a good laugh about that. I just don't understand how she was able to write and use it well in a sentence, but cannot pronounce it properly, he said after we had a good laugh. Well, it could be that she didn't write it, I offered. He said, no way, are you saying she paid someone to do the work for her? I said, it doesn't have to be an actual monetary payment. 
A girl in my school has guys who liked her, just doing stuff like that for her. He said, she has to be really hot cause there is no way I'm doing that for a girl who is not steaming. It was the first time I would hear him talk about a girl like that. Prior to that, I just never thought he would even consider a girl hot. I felt bad cause I knew I wasn't hot. I just figured he would like me for my brains and our intense connection and chemistry. I also felt jealous because the girl in my school was indeed very hot. The next year, my friend transferred to our school and the game changed. He was handsome and new, so naturally he had lots of admirers in the school. All the girls liked him, but he had his eyes on someone else. The hottie who got guys to do her homework. It was torture listening to him talk about her. Talk about her hair, her lips, her eyes, how crazy he was about her. He even wrote poems for her and would have me read them to see if it was good before passing them on to her. I was insanely jealous, not just because I had feelings for him, but also because I felt like I was losing my only friend in the world. I comforted myself with the fact that she would never date him. He was cute and all, but he was also a nerdy guy. He wasn't an athlete and she was known to only date athletes. One day, I decided to let him know how I felt about him. We were in his dad's library as usual. I was reading a novel and he was working on a math puzzle. I wrote, I love you, I always have, on a small piece of paper and dropped it on the note he was working with. He picked it up, read it and looked up at me. I went back to my novel and felt his arms around my neck. I turned around and he kissed me. I felt very special. In the weeks after that, we hung out as usual, but we would kiss in between reading or whatever else we were doing. One night, when it was just him and his brother in the house, we snuck up to his bedroom and you know what? We kept hanging out and doing those things until one day, I realized that we didn't have a defined relationship. I had told him that I loved him, but he never said the same to me or even that he liked me. I didn't think about it too much until I borrowed a book from him and saw a small note in it. The popular girl in school had replied to a love note from him. She told him she thought he was cute and agreed to go out with him on Friday evening. I felt embarrassed and stupid. I remember running to my sister's room and begging her to drive me around. I wanted to see where he had taken her. I went to all his favorite cafes and restaurants. I even went to the cinema, but I didn't see him. As we drove back home, I saw him pull up in front of his house with her riding shotgun. I nearly jumped out of my sister's car and walked up to them. What's going on here? I asked when I got to the car. They were both still in the car. What? He asked, looking at me like I had horns on my head. I said, are you cheating on me? Are you going out with her? He said, whoa, what do you mean by cheating? Is this a joke? We're not even dating. You're joking, right? I thought you said nothing was going on and she was obsessed with you, she asked him, looking at me sympathetically. He shifted uncomfortably in the driver's seat. Listen, nothing's going on between me and her, okay? She... I didn't wait to hear what he said. I walked away and never allowed him to utter even a word to me again. He came to my house many times, but my sister yelled at him and once threatened to call the police the next time he showed up at the door. Luckily, my sister was there for me all through that period. She took care of me and allowed me to cry on her shoulder whenever I returned from school and saw the two of them together, kissing and having a good time. Fast forward to six years later, I met my friend at a writer's conference. I had worked on my eating habits and was looking just as hot as my mother and sister. It was amazing. I would heard from my sister years before that he got married to the popular girl from school. He got her pregnant and they got married just before she started showing. My sister loved gossip and always had the hot gist. He could barely recognize me when he saw me. He stared at me for so long before finally coming to me and calling me by my full name. That's correct, I said, grinning at him and already hatching my revenge plan. Yes, I was that vengeful. I hated to be taken for a fool, and that was exactly what he took me for. I wanted to do something, empty a bottle of wine on his nice tux, anything. We got talking, and he talked about everything that happened between us, but I played it cool and was civil. My room's on the second floor if you want to hang out later tonight, or maybe need company later, he said with a wink. It'll be like old times, he added. Old times? I don't want it to be like old times. Old times were bad times for me. 
I couldn't believe he still thought he had some sort of effect on me, and he was going to cheat on his wife. I returned to my hotel room that night and told my sister all that had transpired. She was pissed. We need to tell his wife, I said to her. She said, no, that would do nothing, trust me. I said, it won't? She said, honey, not a lot of women will up and leave their marriage or anything because someone their husband dumped in the past claimed he propositioned her for sex. I winced when she said dumped and felt more rage. On the second day of the conference, he came over and sat beside me, trying to bring up deep topics I liked. It was all so fake that I started wondering if he'd always faked it. On the last day, I took up his offer to come to his hotel room. He was excited and I pretended to be too. I made him order the most expensive wine on the hotel's menu and great food too when we went down to the restaurant to grab dinner. After dinner, he tried getting me to go up with him, but I wasn't ready yet. I asked that we visit the hotel's bar and he agreed. I made sure he had a lot to drink before we returned to his room. It was very late at the time, so I figured he'd sleep up as soon as we got up. We made out for a bit, and then I told him I needed to use the bathroom. I came out of the bathroom to meet him on the bed, already passed out and even snoring. I got to work immediately. Took his suitcase, his shoes, they looked expensive and new, his wristwatch, and the hotel's telephone. I returned to my room and left the telephone in my room. Barely two hours after, I checked out of the hotel with his stuff and caught my flight back to my state. Later that day, I was sleeping, tired from all the stress that came with the conference, when I got a call from him. I know what you did. You have to give me my stuff back or I'll call the police, he threatened. I laughed. How about you call the police and I call your wife, I shot back. He never called again. Well, I certainly hope that wristwatch was worth some good money. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy story of revenge, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.